Bioshock is a first-person shooter released in 2007 by 2K Games and is widely known for being one of the most influential and iconic games of all time. There are many amazing aspects to this game including its innovative gameplay, its unique aesthetic design and its deeply engaging story. These elements all play a part in demonstrating why Bioshock is such an important title in the gaming industry, but perhaps Bioshock's greatest accomplishment is the way in which it creates a believable and yet awe-inspiring world for the player to uncover. Set in an underwater city known as Rapture, this game's setting helps it stand out from the crowd by delivering a visually stunning and thought-provoking experience that forever cemented Bioshock's place as one of the most groundbreaking games ever released. Rapture is an underwater city founded by Andrew Ryan, the antagonist for the majority of the game. Andrew Ryan created Rapture in the 1940s as he wished to live in a world in which people were entitled to the results of their own efforts. This philosophy, known as individualism, was the sole basis behind Rapture's construction. I am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No says the man in Washington, it belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. The artist would not fear the censor, where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality, where the great would not be constrained by the small. Rapture is essentially a totally privatized economy as there is no government involvement in the affairs of the people. Andrew Ryan's vision for Rapture was for it to be a society where you are free to live up to your full potential, but only if you have the will to do so. This, in theory, could have turned out to be a true paradise, but of course, as we know, that's not how it turned out. Without restrictions, limits, or oversight, and the unrelenting greed of humanity, it seems clear that Andrew Ryan's vision of a city of freedom was doomed from the start, nothing more than a time bomb waiting to go off. This seemingly simple yet original idea for a setting, and the deeply interesting philosophy behind it, is what grabs the player from the first 10 minutes as it immediately tells the player that this game will stand out from all others and be something truly different. Rapture's architecture is in a mid 1900s style as the city began construction shortly after World War II. The city is filled with bright vibrant lights that contrast heavily with the deep dark ocean around Rapture to create a very visually unique video game setting. Rapture uses an art deco style of architecture, a style that was very popular in the 1940s. Its use in Rapture is very deliberate to show how advanced of a civilization it was in terms of technology and science, as it puts an emphasis on symmetric patterns and bright contrasting colours. It shows wealth and power and perfectly demonstrates the utopian view Andrew Ryan had in mind for the city. This paired with the fact that Rapture also feels surprisingly down to earth in that the game's levels still feel like functioning, realistic places in a believable city is what makes the world feel so compelling and interesting. Bioshock shows that in a video game, or any form of media set in a fictional world, a balance between grounded reality and awe-inspiring, unique ideas is the key to creating a memorable, captivating experience. The fact that the city is well past its heyday, with many walls collapsing in and classical 1950s music playing in the background of most levels, creates a very eerie atmosphere, and while Bioshock isn't necessarily a horror game, it can be quite a tense or even frightening experience to traverse through some sections of the game, like when you can hear a splicer shouting nonsense from the other side of a room, or when you hear the booming footsteps of a nearby Big Daddy. This sense of fear comes from the fact that Rapture is unknown territory. The player has no idea what could be waiting around the next corner for them. Early on in the game, you can find a shotgun in a dark room, seemingly abandoned on the floor. When you pick up the shotgun, it triggers an ambush by several splicers. This scene helps create a sense of danger in every shadow for the player, strengthening the element of fear as it demonstrates how the player is always unsure of what horrors they could find in this fallen utopia. 
like what new threat could present itself, or what shocking revelation about Rapture's history could be revealed. One excellent example of this is the reveal of the dark fate of the citizens. Bridget Tenenbaum discovered Adam, a chemical substance that has the ability to rewrite genetic material, allowing the user to gain extraordinary abilities by spending the Adam at a gatherer's garden to gain plasmids. Plasmids essentially give the user superpowers, and the player gets to use a wide variety of them throughout the game, such as the ability to shoot fire, electricity or ice, and telekinesis. Unfortunately, due to the extremely addictive nature of Adam, the citizens of Rapture all became obsessed with the chemical, to such an extent that it was needed for the city to continue to function. Eventually, the demand for Adam outgrew the rate it could be produced, leading to people experiencing severe withdrawal symptoms and turning them into insane, rabid-minded creatures. This is how splicers came to be. The reveal that the most abundant enemy type in the game are just poor souls who have lost their minds is as terrifying as it is tragic. And this is only one small aspect to the world of Bioshock, yet it has an extensive, deep explanation hidden in the lore of Rapture. The more the player explores Rapture, the more they understand how the city operated when it was a functioning place habited by real, sane people. At a certain point in the game, the player ventures into an area known as Arcadia, where the auction supply for Rapture is produced by a network of trees. While there, Andrew Ryan releases a toxic gas that kills the trees, preventing them from photosynthesizing. The player then goes on to save the trees, and therefore themselves from suffocating, but the true purpose of this area was to show a realistic sight to Rapture, and explore how the city functioned before its downfall. Arcadia is one of the most memorable areas in the game, as it stands out both visually by being overrun by flora, and by showing the player some of the inner workings of Rapture, in this case how the citizens received auctions despite being on the ocean floor. Rapture is brought to life amazingly by 2K Games due to the intricate planning that went into the city's design. The combination of Andrew Ryan's philosophy behind the city's creation, the unique visual aesthetic, the element of fear, the deep lore of Rapture's history, and the realistic functionality of the underwater metropolis all culminate in one of the most incredible and genius video game settings of all time. Of course, I could have gone into much deeper detail on all aspects of this groundbreaking game, but I believe they all deserve a video of their own. I may make those videos someday, but this was my first analysis style video, so I decided to keep it small and concise. I hope to make more videos like this in the future on other games, and with each one I make, the quality of the video should improve. Anyways, thanks for watching, and goodbye.